Happy May Day. Aloha. We just celebrated big time in Hawaii. This is Martin from iSpeakForYou.net. We have so much to talk about. So many callers calling in. Get ready. It's Thursdays, races and events. Happy May Day. You can listen to us live, iSpeakForYou.net. Just go onto the website. It'll automatically play. If it doesn't, hey, there's a little button right there. Push play. Listen to us live. See what's going on. We're going to have Mandy Heinz from Hot Wheels Racing. Presented by Guru on, as well as many others. Get ready. It's races and events. For your t-shirts, your banners, hats, flyers, embroidery, web design, and yes, even your koozies for your beverages. Online at edragontees.com. That's edragontees.com. Oh yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Crossman, World Class Drum Corps, and I Speak For You Learning Events want you to save the dates. 13 and 14 June 2014. That's right, the Crossman, Texas' only world class drum corps, representing San Antonio, Texas to the world, presenting their second annual one mile run, walk, stroll, crawl, whatever you need to do. How fast can you run one mile? All information on iSpeedForYou.net or Crossman.org. I say save the dates 13 and 14 June. The run is on the 14th, but the 13th is their MMX, their dress rehearsal, before they go out on tour around the country. Find out more information again at crossmen.org or at iSpeakForYou.net. Oh, yeah, again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's races and events. We were out of town last week at a great, great event. Uh, we got another one coming up. We're out of town this weekend for the BCS Race Series at College Station. 5K in the morning, got a 10K and 5K at night. All three events on Saturday. For more information, look at bcsraceseries.com. Again, we got so much things to talk about. Uh, I put it on my Facebook. I put it on the I Speak For You Facebook you can follow us at Twitter at I Speak For You. Uh, you can hashtag us actually if you want to talk to the show. Hashtag is I Speak For You Radio, and uh, and we'll answer your questions. Of course, if you're listening to us on the Spreaker app or Spreaker.com, of course the user is I Speak For You. There's a little chat thing on there. Chat with us. We'll talk about your races and your events. It's a free thing. I talk about races from all over the country. We're going to talk about uh, the Torrijila. We're going to talk about 
uh, Boston, what happened at Boston. Uh, again, congratulations, Meb, on that incredible, incredible run. Uh, if you had another 200 yards, I don't think you would have made it, my friend, but you uh, you did. And I could call him friend. Being one of my uh, Rock and Roll Marathon competitor group, I get to interview Meb all the time. But on the air right now, as you hear the phone ringy ringy, is Amanda Hines coming from Joe Martin Stage Race. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I saw that picture you put on Facebook where you were leading the pack last night. Do these do these do these folks not understand what <laughs> is going on when you go to the front? Do they not? I don't understand. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It was it was fun though. It was fun. Uh, those boys just. They kind of they kind of let you go for a minute, and then they, they then they won't see you again for a while. <laughs> and they're going, well, what, who was that? Who was that? You know, but that was amazing. Yeah, so, uh, so many things going on. We haven't talked, and we haven't touched base lately because you've been out of town. I've been out of town. So, what is the latest or greatest? And obviously, you and I need to talk offline. But uh, what is the latest and greatest going on with Hot Wheels Racing? Well, we, we just came off a great weekend. It was a great showing for us. Um, second ever NRC race, and um, we had three top ten finishes and a podium at the NRC race. Didn't think this was going to happen this quick, but it happened. And very, very successful. Oh, yeah. You to race, throw the podium in there again. Congratulations on that third place. Uh, I know Lauren Stevens looked over probably and was like, shit, Mandy's here. So, because uh, obviously you guys know each other, you've been doing a lot of road and a lot of riding and everything, but uh, to have two te- Texas girls on the podium like that, obviously congratulations for Lauren for winning the uh, overall and just dominating yeah. the stages and everything, but uh, but you're up and coming and the team's up and coming, like you said, you didn't expect it to happen so fast, uh, so kudos obviously to you and the sponsors, Guru, uh, He, Cobb Cycling, all that fun stuff, but uh how was it feeling to be home? Because, you know, you go to these big races, you go to Redlands, you go to Joe Martin stage race and you come home and you're going, do you, do you get to relax at all? Or do you like, okay, I've got this on my schedule. I've got to get ready for. Yeah. Um, unlike the other pro teams where they get to kind of put their feet up, we've all got to go to work. So, you know, I drove in on Sunday post crit. I drove halfway to Dallas and then I drove in Monday from Dallas, came home, went straight to work and still training, pretty much 20 hours a week working as well and managing the team. So it doesn't stop. Um, and definitely the training has really picked up this week uh, as we prepare for, for, for the next NRCs that are coming up too. Cause I think the next one on our schedule is road nationals out in Chattanooga. Oh yeah. Uh, yep. So it's, it's one thing after another, but you got to keep one foot in front of the other. Being home is great. It's fun being back in the community, being around your friends, and having those nice group rides. It's, it's it makes your heart feel good. So, what can you what can so, you tell folks that 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 have never raced outside Texas, or, or you know they they do the driveway series on Thursday nights, or they do the uh, the racing over there on Wednesday nights and stuff like that. But when they go to a major NRC event, and there's other categories, it's just not pro men, pro women, uh, or elites like that. But there are category four and fives and everything. But what would you recommend or tell those folks that are like, hey, I want to go to do Joe Martin next year or I want to go do a, a, an NRC event? What would you tell them? You know, it's you got to you got to take it in stride. Um, don't have any expectations. You you got to take each day as a new day um, and learn whatever you do. Just watch and learn and. Just don't think you're going to go in and since you do really well in your category in one area, just remember the best of the best is racing together and to stay focused and let your expectation be to not only just be happy to be there, but to take in the knowledge that can make you a better rider and learn to work with the best of the best of your category. Now be now now be honest when you when you pinned up and, and and Allison and everybody pinned up over at Redlands, do you sit there for a moment going, "Holy crap! These are the ladies I've seen online. These are the ladies I've seen in magazines, and I'm standing here right next to them." Did you did you actually do that? I mean, I know oh, yeah. you, I know you come from a pro triathlete background and everything, but but to to line up against Bam Bam uh, and stuff like that, I mean, it's like it would be awe inspiring right. for me. So it is, it is, it's it's humbling. Um, and when you're, when you're on their wheel or you come in front of them, um, you know, the, 
they have a little bit stronger teammates and a longer or, or larger roster of teams. But it is, it's completely awe-inspiring. And you're like, no, I got here for a reason, and I'm going to give everything that I can. But you watch those girls that you've been watching, you're reading about in magazines and watching on TV, and you're like, okay, I can do this too. Um, but it's it was completely grounding to be out there and, and to be a part of it and to and to actually do well. You know, it wasn't just like, hey, I just showed up and I'm happy to be here. It's like, no, I'm going to be a little bit more. I'm going to use my training, use my knowledge, and use my skills to make a mark and make them work for it. If they want to win, I'll make them work for it. Yeah, and obviously you got a great, great group of ladies on the team and everything like that, and everybody's looking forward to such a – I mean, the season's so long, uh, and everybody's so looking forward to it. We've had great results uh, so far this year. Obviously, coming up next weekend is Houston Grand hometown crit. Uh, there's yes. gonna be there's gonna be a lot of bragging rights in that crit right there. So, and 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 you know, oh, yeah. with, me, with me on the microphone, there's gonna be some preems thrown out at you. Uh, what's gonna be the strategy going into the hometown race? You know, we've got one thing in mind, and it's a W. So, <laughs> it's gonna hurt. That crit will hurt, and we ain't stopping. And so that is, that's all I can say right there. That crit will definitely hurt. We're going to, we're, we're bringing out the whole team. <clears throat> so we've got some heavy guns coming out. It's going to be amazing. Uh, so obviously there's a lot of things coming up and everything. So what, what has been your favorite so far uh, in regards to the team that you, you, you would hope to happen and then it has happened this year. What has been the favorite or your your most memorable thing besides getting on the podium at Joe Martin? What has been the thing that you're going, you know what, this freaking rocks? You know, for a funny, there's a funny comment is when, you know, you get pulled over by Yasada and you have to be drug tested <laughs> for a win. That was hilarious. Like, that's, that's the moment where you're like, oh, my God, I'm somebody. <laughs> you know, um, no, oh, that was funny, but... You know, it's the it's the finishing of a race and your teammates who help you get up the road or supported you and seeing their faces when you just podiumed or you've just produced a result for the team and having that camaraderie come together um, and every day sitting down and learning and talking with each other. Um, that right there is definitely not many people can say I've done that with a team, with a group. Um, it means a lot because your team's getting stronger and it's growing. Um, you got to work out the, the, the BS, but you really got to build on the positives. So I, that, that's really, it's something special that you can't just, you know, train for. You got to build it. That is so true. That is so true. Obviously, the first year team and everything. I mean, it's one of those things like, oh, we hope we we do well at races and everything. Obviously, you've gotten tons of podiums already. But one of the things is, is you're looking at. Obviously, you got state championships. You you got to be the team in Texas. I will say. Uh, obviously, like I said, next weekend Houston Grand Crit. Uh, that's going to be a big one. There's so many folks that come into that one, not just from Houston, but obviously around Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, Mexico. Uh, a lot of international field coming up to play in that one um but like i said state championships are coming up is that a goal i mean obviously like you said nationals is coming uh what is the big right. goal of the team for the end of the year for the end of your banquet basically mandy is where do you want to be and where do you want what jerseys do you want hanging up to demo you know of course we'd love to have state jerseys and and be there but this year focused on is a growing year and we're trying to tackle the NCC and the NRC calendar and raise as much as we can in order to grow experience. Um, that might mean that we'd have to sacrifice the more local stuff in local titles only because, you know, the girls that we're racing against, we might be just as strong as they are, but they're, they're much more smarter than we are because they've raced these courses over five, 10 years. So they know when it's going to get fast. They know what that downhill hard 90 is going to feel like. Um, they know where it's technical. We don't. We might drive the course the night before, but that doesn't give us anything like it is when you race it. Right. Um, so, yes, of course we'd love to 
gather all the jerseys that we can in Texas and show that our domination here. But our real focus is learning and growing and building over this first year to then the following year be more aware and smart when we ride our bikes because the strongest rider doesn't win races. The smartest one does and the smartest team. That's so true. Now, the big thing about has been going on this Facebook this week, and obviously I just tagged you on Facebook about Athens Twilight, uh, the big crash with the moto and all that, uh, accidents and races. Obviously, Gila had a huge one yesterday with 80 guys going down in the pro race. Um, it's inevitable. I mean, if folks that are out there going, hey, I want to race, but I- I'm afraid to r- get you know get hit or wreck or whatever, it's going to happen. You know, you're going to have scars. It's just an interval when you race bikes and everything. But the Athlete's Twilight, and a lot of folks are going, oh, that's crazy. Oh, that was nuts. Oh, that moto should have moved. But if he would have moved, Emil would have been so much more hurt than he actually was. Uh, so right. it, it happens. Obviously, like you were just talking about, you're coming into a blind corner. You're coming into a 90. It, it The the damage or the uh, what I want to say is the risk is there. But when you throw it in at a nighttime, the risk is even greater. So – Right. What what do, what do you say about the Athens Twilight? Because obviously in the pro ranks, you know, you're you're full bore. You're not sitting there going, I'm not going to be pack fodder, you know, sitting around the back and everything. We're not going to cruise around at 20 miles an hour. You being where you are, what do you think was going through these guys' minds when they came around the corner and went, holy shnikes, there's a motorcycle in the middle of the road? You know, it's it's uh, with you, when that bell goes off and the whistle's blowing, it's on. And a lot of these men and women – they race professionally, therefore they are depending on the money and the love of the sport. And so it's hard just to tone it down when you hear that there's a crash somewhere, you just figure you're going to be going around it. Unfortunately, that crash happened to be at the most inopportune corner in the world. And it is what it is. It happened. They try to clean it up as quick as they could. And, you know, maybe next time things are run a little bit different, but you can't plan for everything. You only can make things better and make sure they don't happen again. But that's it. The The whole thing is when I tell people bike racing, if you think I'll never go down, that's horrible. You need to know that it's not if, it's just when. But you put yourself in positions and put yourself around people that you know that can protect you and you won't go down as often. And you can become more skillful. So if you do go down, you learn how to fall um, to protect yourself and protect your body. But that's the nature of the game and nature of the sport. Yeah, so true. And the number one injury, obviously, is broken collarbones. And so many guys had that yesterday. And obviously, uh, Emil had one on uh, at Athens Twilight and everything. Um, myself, I've had seven broken collarbones on my left side, three on my right side. And uh, it, it's just the nature of the beast. If you're gonna if you're gonna race and you have a love of the sport, it doesn't matter if you're racing. You can be riding from here to Lifetime Gym or to get your local coffee shop fall off on the side of your bike and, and it happens so uh my thing is folks keep riding your bike obviously so you've got a little bit of time off coming up this weekend and everything like that what do you what do you plan on doing are you going to the spa getting a manny petty i mean what's going on in the life of mandy Hines? you know um i probably i do need a i definitely do need a pedicure um, <laughs> you know uh miles this week has started off um hitting it heavy again no no rest for the weary um, I actually have a new coach, and it's been great. New philosophies, new new turnover. Looking forward to it, and just hitting the miles uh, in the next couple of weeks. And of course, you're home, and you have no racing, but you're still putting in a good 180, 190 miles over the weekend. That's crazy. But also, you're doing. And you talk about changing the coaches and everything. We're going to get in later into the into the show. I mean, I know you got to get back to work and everything, but and changing the coaches and everything, are you lifting weights? Are you in the gym doing cardio? I mean, obviously you're on the bike doing cardio, but are you doing any running? What what, what, do you, what is in the usually weekly workout plan for you? It's, it's the majority. It's 90% cycling. There is no other cardio other than cycling. Um, Gym-wise, it's plyos. Um, it's going to be, you know, box jumps, explosive things like that, uh, core work and stretching. Main thing is focusing on just getting my body a little bit more limber, just trying to stay injury free with all the miles. And, and it's, it's just been kind of different, uh, 
different turnover. It's teaching my body to kind of recruit different muscles right now. Um, but it is pure cycling, pure cycling, no running, no swimming, no nothing, just, just on the bike. Well, no CrossFit or no uh, flipping tires or anything like that? No, um, you know, it just doesn't seem that it, flipping a tire would benefit me on a bicycle. <laughs> Well, I said that I said that about a wall squats too, but after twenty minutes of wall squatting, I couldn't move. So uh, it hurts your thighs so much. But it, it, it's just amazing. Now you know. Again, congratulations on getting third at Joe Martin in that stage. Uh, the rain, obviously, and the crit was crazy. Um, it's one of those things like you 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 train what you're going to be racing in. I tell that to people all the time. They're like, oh, it's a little bit raining. I don't want to go train. Hey, suck it up. You got to go train because you never know. Mother Nature, as you guys know. It may be raining on race day. Mm -hmm. That's it. You gotta. I mean, you're not going to put yourself in a position where it's cold and rainy. You're going to get sick, but you definitely have to suck up to the elements. If it's windy outside, and guess what? It was so windy on you know on uh, the road races out in Joe Martin that it, it was gutter fest for an eight k straight. Just a, there was just a, a centimeter of road left before a ditch someone would find it just to stay out of the wind but in order to, to to put yourself through that hell and put yourself through that pain you've got to train in that and i'm so used to doing that here in houston where we might not have hills but we have wind and those are invisible hills oh, and yeah. they, they oh, hurt yeah. I used to add uh, oh, yeah. five miles onto my rides every time I had a ride into wind. I'm like, you know what? That wind was terrible, and I'm going to add five miles because I literally put in another five miles of effort just because that wind was hitting me so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to punish yourself now so then the pain bank is built up so you can tolerate a little bit more on race day. So I had a question. Someone just texted us in to me. Ask her, uh, so you have a Cat 4 girl who hasn't been fitted properly for a bike, uh, it just literally sees what goes with the flow, does all that kinds of thing. What um, she's asking, ask her, what would she recommend for a brand new Cat Four to do uh, to get better in the racing scene and also for training? For for training, I mean, for racing, you know, it's it's to get in it, try it out, don't be scared, ask questions when you're at the races, and. Because that's how you learn. You, especially if you're if you're not used to group riding, training wise, go on group rides. Uh, get the feel what it feels like to be in a pack. Um, and if you're nervous, work on those nerves. Um, get used to having somebody you know right next to you. Um, the good thing about Cat Four racing is it's not as large as fields as like the pro women's fields where we have like 120. You might just have 20. Um, and that's, the, if you race, then you learn and then you, you take in that knowledge. If you get dropped, you're like, okay, I got dropped, but why? And then you learn from that and then you go into the next race and you put that knowledge the next time. So maybe you don't get dropped or you get dropped only two laps left versus five laps left. Um, but the, I think a lot of training for cat fours is racing, um, asking questions, not being scared to ask questions, and don't be scared if someone yells at you. And I always tell that to new cat fours. If someone yells at you to keep a line or to stay upright or whatever you're doing, just take it and listen and just realize it comes off pretty harshly because your heart rate is going so fast that it's not going to come out with a please or thank you. It's going to be belted out screaming because – you're 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 not wanting to go down so don't take it to heart don't get scared don't get intimidated um and training wise you know just get out there and ride your bike uh but i say group rides don't train by yourself that's such a good point that is such a good point uh always always have your buddy with you um or uh you know your girlfriend or what have you go out on rides don't don't go by yourself i i unfortunately have to go by myself but i call michelle exactly where i'm going well, you know my plan and everything she knows where i am i text her to turn around points and stuff like that so she knows where i am but it's one of those things like there's a three foot law folks all around the uh, around the country but uh you know some drivers just aren't heeding to that as we're seeing and uh obviously we want all everybody to be safe out there so like like mandy's saying there's so many group rides that goes on and i know there's some in 
and Katie Houston and all that. There's some in your area, wherever you are as well. Just get your local cycling shop and say, hey, where's a group ride? Where's a no-drop ride, I'll say. Because you may go to a group ride where they're getting ready for a big race, and they're all hammering at 25 miles an hour or more. And obviously, you'll get dropped, and you'll go, okay, I have no idea where I'm going. But look for a no-drop ride. Right. So, yep. and so, use social media, Facebook it out there, find out what people are doing, and you'll get connected. You'll find the right people. So true. Manny, thanks for calling in, darling. Yeah, thank you guys, and thank everybody for all the support. Uh, it's no been problem. Fun, and we're we're going to keep producing results. Yep, and you uh, you call me later when you can. All right, we'll be Mark. Thanks. Right, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, we got that was Mandy Hines from Guru presented by Hot Wheels Racing. Now we've got the Michael of all Michaels, Michael Boker on the phone from CyclingSwami.com, Two Brothers Lawn Care. Uh, you got so many hats, my friend. I just need to print them out one day and just leave them right here by the computer. How you doing, Michael? Watching that gay uh, sombrero so we can fit, all, <laughs> fit them all on the top. I'm telling you, man. You do so many things. It's a, it's insane. You do more than I do, so... Uh, how are you doing, brother? Man, I'm good, Mark. Uh, I'm, I'm on the road again, driving back from Dallas, visiting some shops, and uh, spent yesterday up at the uh, Superdrome, learning how to motor pit behind the moped on the track. Uh, I was just listening to the Mandy's interview there, and and she's right. You know, the only way to get better is to get out there and do it. You can't can't learn racing on your your Saturday morning group ride. You can learn bike handling, and you can learn drafting, but you want to race, the only way to do it is to race. So, Yeah, we get, I mean, obviously the driveway series is going on. It's Thursday. It's, you know, it's every Thursday up in the, uh, up in Austin. You got a lot of folks that have never done it. They're like, you know what? I ride around town on my, on my, uh, on my single speed or what have you. I, I want to try this racing thing. Um, you've been there, done that obviously for years. What do you recommend to a new cat five guy that's going out there for the first time going, holy crap, I'm fixing to pin a number on. Well, first thing is, I mean, that's, that's step one is, is, you know, getting your license, getting your number pinned on. But, I mean, it's I teach a bunch of things, and part of it is, is even pinning your number on correctly. Um, you know, you've been on those, on those racing lines, and you see the new guy with four pins through the holes of the, of the number, and that right there signifies that he's kind of new. So you, you kind of stay away from that. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of value in the prep work, uh, new people can learn from from other experienced people or even their coach uh, but man you just have to get out there and do it and you know it, it's easy to say not be afraid but you know you have to know the fact that you have the skills to, to turn the pedal and you'll learn the line you don't have to be within you know one millimeter of the tire in front of you but you certainly have to be able to take advantage of the draft and the more you do it uh, the more comfortable you get um I was really impressed with Mandy uh, and all the girls from from Hot Wheels Racing. You know how they're they're debriefing after the ride. They're talking about whatever the uh, you know whatever the event was or whatever the incident was. And that's the same thing the Cat Fives have to do. You know, hopefully you're, you're up there, or maybe a couple other unattached guys, or you're the new Cat Five on the team, and you know ask the guys for for any input or you know hey when. On, with two laps to go, we went up the corkscrew like really fast, and I got dropped. Does that normally happen? And you know, your teammates will be able to tell you, "Hey, two laps to go. Yeah, you need to be standing up that corkscrew in a harder gear. You know, anticipating the surge. Um, and then if it doesn't happen, you're you're good. But if you're not anticipating it, it happens. You get gapped really quick, especially at the driveway course. Yeah, we used to tell folks to go out and uh, and just ride the course before they race, you know, like a couple weeks before, ride the course with a bunch of friends so they can say, okay, be here at this point, be here at this point, that kind of thing like you were just talking about. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of folks doing MS-150s. I know you do SAG for that. You do aid stations for those. Um, the MS-150s is a whole different breed of animal. Uh, what do you what do you tell folks that are like, hey, I want to do an MS-150. What do you What do you think? And, you know, what do I bring? Obviously, I'm picking your brain, Michael, because you know so much about cycling that that I want people to know just how incredible you are. So they can go to cyclingswami.com, obviously. But uh, in all you do, what is the number one thing you think that people, brand new folks that are basically going to a shop to get a bike, what should they look for? Well, they really, I tell people to go look at three different bikes from three different shops. Um 
each shop is going to have its own niche or maybe its own uh, brand that they like. Right. The, the biggest thing is you want somebody that's going to be able to help you two weeks after the sale, you know, a month after the sale. They're going to kind of really become friends. Uh, and that's, I mean, those are the good shops that last and stick around. Uh, they definitely go look at three different bikes in really the same price point with the same componentry and kind of see. There's so many companies out there that are making bikes, and um, the biggest thing I would tell them is to, if you can, get the shop or the, the sales guy that's helping you to tell you what the top tube length is. I know a lot of these bikes are measured in centimeters on the seat tube, 50, 52. Other companies use odd numbers, 51, 53. But um, from a bike fitting perspective that I do after the sale is the top tube length is what matters. Um, because I can only make the bike so long. I can move the seat forward and backward, and I can change the stem shorter or longer. Um, but if those parameters are outside of that uh, top tube length, then there's nothing I can do, and that bike just is not going to be as performance-driven as one that would fit you. Um, there are people that buy bikes off Craigslist and, you know, hey, it was in my budget, and it's blue, and I like it. And, <laughs> you know, it says Trek on it, and it's carbon. Right. Yes, but it's 2003 Trek USPS replica edition carbon, you know, that's that's a 54, and you actually need a 56. So, you know, um, a lot of these guys, some of the newer guys especially, they come in, they want carbon bikes, and obviously if they're going to a shop, the, the stuff's going to be current, but, you know, 2003, 2008 carbon is way different than 2014 carbon. Oh, that's true, and you also don't know if that uh, that carbon fiber was made in China, and the first time you uh, you hit a pebble on the road, it's not going to crack and break on you too. So that's one thing you got to walk for. And that's what we always tell people: support your local shops because you can literally go in there and, and put your hands on it, so to speak, and uh, and get the professional guidance that you need. So we always say, you know, don't 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 shop online because. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. But obviously there's some things that you go online and you're like, okay, I see the product, I know the product, and uh, and, I, and I can get it that way. But obviously there's certain things that you don't want to do that. Yeah, um, real quick story. I was selling a, a bike to a guy over uh, this past weekend, and his, he told me his budget. His budget was, you know, $1,500, and he wanted carbon. Um, you know, that's certainly on the low end stuff. But I was able to find a 2011 that was on clearance, but what I did for him to help him kind of understand it and make sure that it was the right size is we actually kind of spent about 25 minutes kind of what I call pre-fitting. You know, we, we put his, uh, he had his shoes, and we, we got them all dialed in, moved the seat, flipped the stem over, actually shortened the stem, and that felt comfortable. And then he felt more comfortable spending the money on the bike instead of doing the traditional way. You know, where you plunk down your, your money first and then you schedule your fit appointments. Um, I mean, it's a rare occasion to be able to do that, but those are the kind of shops that you need, those people that will, um, you know, make you feel like you're the only person in the store, even even though it's Saturday afternoon and everybody's in there buying their nutrition and, you know, trying to get deals on, on the stuff that's on sale. But, um, cause, you know, you know that that, that guy's going to remember you. That shop's going to remember you. And those are the things that also give shop loyalty to those people. Right. You know, next time he needs something, he's going to come back in and remember that shop and tell his friends. So Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, they have so many shops, and there's a lot of great shops. And then there's you know, there's other ones that are just there, and, uh, you know, they, they carry the products or they can order the products. That's, that's the one thing I don't like on uh, – there's so many products out there now, and, you know, everybody wants, hey, do you have the new this? I'm like, no, we can order it. So, like you said, right. everybody wants to see it, touch it, feel it. That's so true. There's a, there's also there's also those shops. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Rock and Roll San Antonio Marathon real quick. I'm the announcer for it. Um, and one of the things that we found out was there was a shop that was promoting uh, crashing the finish line, basically getting a bunch of bikes together going through the finish line before the runners get there and basically crashing the party and everything. And, uh, and, and literally social media and both of us are big fans of social media, just tore that place apart going, are you freaking kidding me? Because they literally, you know, they found out about it on Facebook. They sent the link and everything to the police department. Police department went over there and said, 
we see one bicycle rider that's not official on this course, we're coming straight to you guys and arresting you for obstruction of whatever, public event or something. But uh, And it happened here in San Antonio, which I'm going, you know, why are you making a bad name for a cyclist? Because we're trying to uh, get along with everybody, I'll say. You know, yeah, there's a three-foot law out there right now, and, and, and you and I are big, big opponents of it or proponents of it. We want everybody to, to, to recognize that there's a three-foot law for private-owned vehicles. For commercial vehicles, there's actually a six-foot law. They have to have six feet between the rider or runner and the vehicle. Uh, and there's so many things going on there right now but that we want everybody to see that, that cycling is good for you health-wise, obviously, uh, greenhouse effect-wise, carbon footprint-wise and everything. And you and I could get on the soapbox and talk about it all day long. But what do you tell folks when they go, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know about riding and is it safe and everything? What do you tell your clients and your friends about how safe cycling is? Um, well, I kind of try to get a little bit of background on, on their riding. If, they, if they're near the sport or they're getting into it because of a friend, um, then I try to really encourage them to go ride with that friend. We've also set up some uh, some bike rides on, I guess you'd call them park paths. Right. Uh, you know, we have the Velo the Velo way up here. We have the East uh, East Austin Bike Trail, which is you know just a, a huge ten foot wide concrete path that people are able to ride on without without cars. You know, it's it's a lot to get somebody used to riding in a group. Around other cyclists, you, you know, they show up at, to your shop ride on Saturday morning. They just bought their bike on Thursday, got it all fitted. They got all their stuff, and now you're going to send them out with 20 people that they don't know that they've never ridden with and traffic. So it's really try to ease them into it, and it really depends on their comfort level, too. Um, like you said, they're promoting cycling as a health thing. Um, I had mentioned about people being able to buy bikes through their doctor's prescription for weight loss. You know, those guys may not have been on a bike in six or ten years or, or since they were kids. And so it's really about trying to find the client's comfort level. Um, and it's funny, I actually, when we're doing the fit, and if they have to get clip pedals, um, one of the things I actually teach them is how to stop while they're on the trainer. There's five steps that I teach as far as, you know, upshifting easier, making sure your foot's out, um, you come up off the seat, you squeeze the brakes, and then you put your foot down. It sounds really simple. You and I can, you know, do it in our sleep. But <laughs> to somebody, to somebody new, um, the two things that they mainly forget to do is the upshifting, which makes it easier to start off when the, the traffic light changes, and then getting that foot out way before they start braking. Like you pull your foot out, unclip, rest it on the pedal, and then you start pulling on your levers uh, to slow yourself down. A lot of times. You know, you kind of forget those steps, and you start squeezing your brakes, and then you try to pull your foot up and out, which that doesn't work because you're stuck in there, and then right. you fall over, and, and they get discouraged. So, um, you know, I, I, I learned that way back when, um, actually when I used to ride with Britain's guys on the MS-150 when I was a pro. Um, but all these little five- and six-year-old videos, the parent never teaches the kid how to stop, and so they're the ones that are, crashing into the grass or running into the back of the family car because nobody taught the kid to stop. They just wanted him to ride his bike. So we take that to the adult side, too. Hey, I, hey, hey, I, to I, 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 did, I did that with my oldest. I was like, hey, just, just run into something. That's how you stop. Then I was like, oh, no, yeah. no, no. Pedal backwards. That's your brake. Pedal backwards, you know. But uh, but exactly. there's so many there's so many things, man. You're, you're, you're preaching the, the talk right now. Uh, obviously, you're in Austin, Texas. What's the what is the uh, what was the range I would basically say uh, of where you will travel to teach folks on on property way of how to do a, how to ride a bike things like that I mean obviously they can get a hold of you on cyclingswami dot com but but the one on one thing is 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 so important uh, I know there's other people out there like you in the world however how do they get a hold of you to say Michael come show me how to do this uh, man the easiest thing is just drop me an email cyclingswami at gmail dot com um, you can go contact me through the website, but, um, man, I love teaching people to ride. Um, they're more than welcome to travel up to Austin if you want to do one-on-one, -on -one, or I can come down to San Antonio. Um, the biggest thing works really good if you have about six to maybe a max of ten people. Um, so if your local club wants to do something, um, last Sunday we helped out with a, uh, a kid's bike rodeo, you know, teaching little kids how to do the slow race and, learn how to stop and look for traffic and ride in the circle and kind of balance their bikes. So 
Um, you know, we'll do it from kids all the way up to adults. Uh, it just really depends on, I mean, it's that time of year. I mean, the weather's getting nice, warm out. All these charity rides are everywhere every weekend. So, um, you know, if you want to get a bike, definitely you know, contact me. I'll even help you um, for a small little 10% percentage. I'll even help you find a bike if you're looking for a used bike. I know a bunch of people that have them or um, where some of the good locations are to find them. And we can make sure that it fits you and it's the right size so you're investing your Making a good investment with your money, man. You you need to come in, and we need to sit there and just do like a two hour show on writing and everything like that. Because, like I said, you 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 have such a vast uh, amount of knowledge. And uh, one of the things I'm talking about really, really real quick, and I know you're you're on the road and everything, but. Um, the the accidents in bike bike racing. Obviously, I talked to Mandy about Athens Twilight. Hey, things happen. Uh, the motorcycle ref was actually protecting a meal that was on the ground. A lot of folks don't see that. They they're like, oh, he should have been out of the way. If he was out of the way, a meal would have been damaged even more. Uh, obviously, yesterday in Torrejilla, eighty guys go down because of crosswinds, um, tires overlapping, and everything. Uh, it just happens in races and everything. But but uh, unfortunately, uh, people don't see that. And obviously, you being who you are and the things you do, obviously you're a race announcer and stuff like that. You see the, the behind the scenes stuff on races that, that the general public don't see. What is your input on, uh, accidents like Athens that happened? You know, I watched three different videos on that. And the best, the best one from a, a spectator perspective was where the guys were coming through the turn, but they were coming towards the camera and they had the orange, uh, you know, the orange safety barrels out there. And I think the, the gentleman that you're talking about, he just basically laid himself out on the ground and right in front of the barrel and everybody uh, you know, kind of piled up behind him. Um, and, yeah, I read through a bunch of the comments and it's, you know, oh, that never should have happened. And, well, you know, like you said, it, it does. Um I don't know what the radio communication was between the moto ref and maybe the official. Um, I have never actually, I've never been in a bike race where they've actually kind of, from a NASCAR term, you know, they red flagged it and shut it down because of a medical emergency. And that, that may have been what needed to take place there. Um, but also, you know, there's, there was a moto ref and a car, uh, you know, lead car on the on the track. I think maybe there could have been some more stuff just to kind of really slow that stuff down for, because um, that was the line. I mean, where where those guys went down, they were in the racing line. They weren't on the inside of the turn. They were on the far uh, exit after the apex, and, and that was the line that everybody needed to go through. Um, but yeah, I mean, it it does happen, and you know, the, the motor ref to his credibility did everything that. He needed to do to, like you said, protect the riders that are down. I mean, his motorcycle even fell over when everybody piled into him, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, nobody can say what they would have done in that situation had that had you not been aware of what it was through the video. If you pulled up on that scene, um, you know, he, he did exactly the same thing any other emergency service would have done. Their vehicle and their body uh, between the rider and, and the other people coming through, so... Yeah, and he actually he actually went to the hospital as well afterwards. Uh, you know, no one saw that, but he actually went to the hospital as well with bruised ribs and everything like that. So he he took one for a meal. Um, but there's folks that are out there going, oh, you know, they should have did this, you should have done that. But like I said, when you're behind the scenes and you only have 20 seconds basically to make a decision, it, it's it's hard. It's it's very difficult to do something like that. Well, okay, and let's say that the uh, the motor ref contacted the, the announcer, the official at the start finish line, and said, hey, we got a rider unconscious, hurt really bad, we need to shut this race down. If the guys have already gone through the start finish line, you know, the only uh, verbal cues they can get is really from the announcer, uh, the speaker system, or the start finish line, unless the lead car gets word of it. But, um, you know, it, if if they decided to shut it down, which, you know, maybe they should have, but you still have to have, like you said, those 20 seconds to make that decision, get it across to the 80 guys that are redlined, racing for prize money, knowing there's two guys up the road that they're supposed to be chasing. And the last time that they went through that turn, the lap before, it was clear. Yeah. You know, there, there was no crash because all that stuff happened behind those guys, and they don't know that. So, um, but... Hopefully the people that saw that and the next time they go to spectator race, they will understand why the corner marshals are there, 
why they have whistles, why they have flags, and why sometimes they're just, you know, um, on a on a warpath, so to speak, to protect that track yeah. and keep the spec- keep the spectators off of it. But you know, I'm sure every uh, race promoter, every announcer has has seen that, and you know, hopefully, there's some learning stuff that we all can pull away from that. Um, whether it's you know better course design or you know maybe even setting up something of, of you know caution laps or or you know somewhere that they can get in there and shut that whole thing down. I mean, unfortunately, with him being laid out like that and, and not having any kind of lighting system like they do in NASCAR, but yeah. like I said, I've never seen a, a race called. And then, you know, you have to give the leaders back their gap of 20 or 30 seconds that they had anyway, and it's it's just frustrating. It's hard, but... Yeah, we we did that at Tour of Austin a couple of years ago. Um, we were at the hospital crit. That young man for UT... Uh, when it went from three lanes down to one lane, little chicane, he went head first into that big, uh, big trash can, um, went into convulsions and everything like that. And uh, and Bonnie Walker, national commissar or international commissar for UCI, was there, and she literally is like, you know, I was on the mic. She's like, Mark, shut it down. Uh, we're, we're we're stopping the race, obviously, to take care of this young man. We did that. There was guys in a break. They had to do just like you just said. Had to give them a, back to thirty seconds to where they were, and then uh, and regain the race, but. As a racer, how would that go into your psyche, man, knowing that, first of all, you're in the red line, your, your heart rate's at 220 miles an hour, you know, and then, uh, and then you're, you're sitting there for 20 minutes waiting, and then you got to ramp back up and, and start it all over again with five laps to go. It, 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 it was just tough for everybody around, athletes, obviously the officials. Chad Andrews, professional announcer, does USA Crits, uh, does nationals, all that. He uh, superb job. But he, and I talked to him, and he said he had no clue that there was a rider down until after they went by. So he had, he couldn't even do anything. Yeah, I mean, and uh, and that's just it. It wasn't one rider off the back. I mean, he was in the in the main lead uh, chase group, and there were. I mean, that whole road was blocked with, with riders, and you know, there's. It, it's kind of one of those things as a racer. If you pass that, and and maybe you catch a glimpse that the rider's down, or you know, you at least on your next lap, you run through and you, you yell crash and turn three or whatever so they can, you know, at least some people are aware of that. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where I think, at, yeah, you're red line, you're, you may be mad for that, but at the same time you have to put yourself in in the other guy's situation. If that's me knocked out unconscious, you know, I would want, I would want to make sure that I get medical attention right away. And the cycling community as a whole and as a family, um, you know, after the fact, I think everybody would calm down. But, of course, you know, social media and Twitter and everything being so instant, you know, everybody's out to to see what went wrong, and I have to put in my two cents. And uh, it was funny. I watched the video, and I I was going to type something actually kind of positive, and I just said, you know what, I'm going to stay out of this. I I don't have any credentials on that. It's just my own opinion, and that's all it is. And you know, at that point, I'm I'm the only one that needed to know what I was thinking, not just a shout out. Oh, they did a terrible job. So yeah, because you never know until you're there. I mean, you know that. I mean, being an announcer and stuff like yeah. that, you you've seen. Uh, I mean, the officials are like, okay, we need to do this. And it's one of those things like, oh, do I say that or do I just listen to what you just said but not say it? You know, it's one of those things. Right. But it's amazing, man. There's so many races coming up. Obviously, a driveway every Thursday night. You find a driveway series, uh, Andrew and Holly and the incredible crew at Holland Racing uh, up there. But uh, Houston Grand next weekend, are you coming over to play at that? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to come over. I'm not sure if I'm going to have products uh, to demo or if I'm actually going to try to line up in the Cat 3. It may depend on what you're doing. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That I'm going to be. Uh, I am going to be prem and happy, my friend. That's what I'm going to be doing. Prem and happy. Well, and, that, and that's kind of my thought process. I might <laughs> just try to sit in there and uh, prem and out, do my do my typical uh, typical uh, prem sprint, and then uh, go home with a little bit of money. But, uh, yeah, the folks, yeah, then actually. Then, yeah, the folks aren't listening. What it is is a preem is a uh, basically a race within a race. Whoever passes the line on the next lap wins whatever we're going to give them. And last year. The pro men, we gave a sixteen hundred dollar premium lap out, and I'm thinking we're going to go two thousand this year. So uh, it's going to be interesting. And and Michael Boca right here, of course, from CyclingSwami.com, is a prima donna. He loves going for the premiums. 
Yeah, I, I've learned your trick. I know if, there, if you say one thing, there's usually at least two. I plan on two, and if not, then I get a, a, a coasting laugh. But, uh, yeah, that, that's one of those things that, you know, even as, like you mentioned, the Cat 5, the new guy, I mean, those are things where you have to know what that term means. Um, you know, if you're in a Cat 5 race and, or a 4 or 5 race or whatever race you're in, and the announcer yells out free lap, then you need to expect that pace to pick up because some guys are going to sprint for those uh, – those socks or those gift certificates. So, um, you know, that's just one of those things you just have to know. Um, and the only way to know it is to race, you know. Yeah, you know, they I, also they also be aware that uh, those guys going for that preem, if they're strong enough, they're going to keep their head down and just keep going. They're not going to go, okay, I got that – $20 uh, cycling tube. I'm just going to keep rolling and get a breakaway established, and then they're gone, and they're never going to come back. Yeah, well, and especially if they're, you know, like what Mandy was talking about, team, if, if they're, uh, if the team idea or plan for that race is, hey, on the fourth preem out of five, you know, two guys or two girls are going to go for that preem from the same team, and the other three are going to block. I mean, that's a tactical move that, um, Usually works if people don't know what you know what's going on. Oh, I don't, I don't need a pair of socks. So I'll, I'll just sit back here. And next thing you know, you're 45 seconds down with two people on the same team up the road. Man, that's a good point. I never even thought about that. <laughs> that's a good point. So what's going on, I mean, man? What what uh, what else you got going on up there? What what can folks uh, get from you from cycleswami dot com? What what uh, what do you have coming up? Man, I am in the process right now of uh, making some T-shirts because, you know, I've been on the road to recovery after my broken elbow, and um, I got these great kits and great shoes and uh, um, kind of made a joke as I was headed out for my ride with my group. Uh, I may look slow, but uh, no, I may go slow, but I look slow. Um, so I'm getting some T-shirts printed up or with that tagline on the back of it, just, you know, one of the fun things that I just come up with on a whim and, think that'd be a good idea so i'm actually going to follow through with it and make uh, make about 30 t-shirts on that so those will be up on the website for sale um got a couple sag events coming up um i got another friend of mine who's doing a mother's day ride up here in austin so ladies only um that's going to be a good time where people can come out and do like a little 15 mile bike ride with just the ladies uh, just a bunch of things man we're we're really trying to promote the sport and you know, give back to where we can. Thinking about going to Tulsa Tough coming up here in June. Ooh. Which is another shoot race. Uh, add that one on your uh, race calendar. We can start talking about. Um, I actually got a uh, phone call from the event coordinator today about expo stuff and you know information on that. So that's a good fun time as well. Tell you folks, you got to pick his brain. You got to get a hold of him. Cycling Swami at gmail dot com. Michael Boker, uh, based out of Austin, Texas, but but he'll he'll come to your area to teach you and, and obviously talk to you on the phone about what needs to be done for cycling. Obviously, three foot law. Uh, and hey, if you need yard work while you're talking to Michael, he can get that done too at Two Brothers Lawn Care. So, uh, Michael, my hats off to you, man, and, and I can't wait to see you again. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, we do that uh, three foot law. Um, are you familiar with what Dan is doing over in Houston? I saw that, and now he's got on a mountain bike, and, and uh, he's got a three-foot flag off there and everything. So tell folks what's going on with that. Well, he is um, hes an amazing guy, just really loves bikes and cycling, and, and but he's really big into the critical mass and the Houston social cycling scene. He has uh, modified a bicycle safety flag. Instead of sticking upright, it actually sticks out sideways, and he's measured from the end of his handlebar out three feet, and he has a banner that hangs on the flag that says Three Foot Law, and he rides in the bike lane with this um, with this flag on and has a GoPro camera mounted in reverse pointing at the flag. So he's actually able to capture uh, people coming really close, touching the flag, and also getting their license plate numbers, and if... Um, if he's able to, he rides up next to him and, and kind of just reminds him of the three foot law. Um, you know, they just need to be aware and, and share the road. So, I mean, we're, we're both passionate about the three foot law. Dan is, uh, <laughs> Dan is a rolling example of it. And he, he rides that thing, um, quite often actually. So it's really good because Houston Chronicles getting some, some press on it. Um, other people are seeing it. Um, other people are seeing what the Houston uh, police are doing, where they're riding in, in bicycle groups in regular cycling gear. 
and then finding uh, vehicles that violate the three-foot law or, or uh, aggravate cycling groups, and they're they're jumping in as a police uh, representative and and making making people aware that they need to just share the road. So true, man. So true. Cyclingswami at gmail dot com. Go to cyclingswami dot com. Talk to Michael, find out what he can do and what you can do to help out with the three foot law and uh and get involved. Mike, thanks for calling, my friend. Uh, thanks, Mark. We'll talk to you later, brother. Bye. Bye. So folks, you're listening to iSpeakFree.net. We will be right back. This is Mark and we'll uh we'll come back and we got some more things we want to talk about, but first we're a quick commercial break. is presented by eDragonTees.com, the premier company for your t-shirts, your banners, hats, flyers, embroidery, web design, and yes, even your koozies for your beverages. Online at eDragonTees.com. That's eDragonTees.com. Were you aware... Texas has a law that commercial vehicles, when passing a road user such as a cyclist, runner, or walker, must obey a six-feet distance between said vehicle and the road user. Texas also has a law that all vehicles, when passing a road user, must obey a three-feet distance. Can you see me now? Three feet, six feet. It's the law. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is again Mark from iSpeakForYou.net. I'd like to thank you, Mark, for listening and uh, look forward to a great weekend. Be safe out there. And if you're in College Station this weekend, where you should be, go to Brazos Running Company. They got a giveaway. Go on their Facebook right now, like Brazos Running Company. They got a giveaway. They're going to give away a pair of ASICs to proudly sponsoring the Aggie Mile and 5K that's coming up. That's right, the Aggie Mile and 5K coming up May 17th. This status, you got to take this status, not the link, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to do a drawing for the A6 at 4 p.m. There's also a coupon code to use for $10 off registration for the 5K or mile race. 
It's BRC14. That is the Brazos Running Company on Facebook. Go to it right now. Like it. And also go to Aggie Mile and 5K on Facebook. Like it. And uh, and get ready because it's an invitational one mile for high school. The fastest high schoolers in the state of Texas are going to be there. So much going on. Brazos Running Company, the running store of all running stores. Over in College Station, you got to try them out. We're going to go over there this weekend. We have a 5K run on Saturday morning. We've got a 5K and 10K on Saturday night. For BCS Race Series, of course, get ready for the BCS Marathon December 14th. The BCSRaceSeries.com. Again, this is Martin from iSpeedFeed.net. Thanks for listening. If you have an event coming up, it is free to tell us. You can call us on Thursdays, email me, Facebook, whatever you want to do, iSpeakForYou.net. Uh, email me at info at iSpeakForYou.net. Hashtag the radio at hashtag at iSpeakForYouRadio on Twitter. And we'll get your information out. It's free. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. We'll do that for you. Again, thanks everybody for listening. Take care. God bless. Have a safe weekend. And we'll see you at College Station at the Brazos Running Company for the BCS Marathon Series Run and Night Trail Run. Have a good weekend.